This is the Hytera HR652 Compact Radio Repeater. In this video, we're going to be talking about some of the features of the new Hytera HR652 repeater, as well as some of the different ways you can configure this repeater, because there are a number of different ways you can configure it, as well as some of the different options that are available for this radio repeater. But before we get into that, at a very high level, I want to explain what a rep radio repeater is for those who might not know. So a radio repeater, uh, very simply put, is a piece of radio communications equipment that if configured properly and placed properly can greatly improve the range of your radio communication system. Traditionally, this is done by receiving signals on one frequency and then retransmitting them on another. So you would take this radio repeater and you would put it at a location that's either centrally located or at a high elevation or both to all of your users and create wide area coverage. What makes this radio repeater unique is that it is a compact field deployable radio repeater. Uh, with this radio repeater, as we'll talk about, you can mount antennas directly to the top of it, and there is even a portable battery pack that can be attached to it um, to use this thing in, in a remote location. Um, Whereas a traditional radio repeater, like a classic radio repeater, it looks like a computer server and it would be typically mounted in a server rack and then you'd have your antenna running out uh, onto your rooftop or wherever your antenna might be. So some of the basic features, this is a 25 watt repeater. It can do analog mode as well as digital DMR mode. Um, and it can also do analog digital auto switching. Analog digital auto switching is where the repeater can um, simultaneously listen for both analog and DMR or digital signals and then transmit either one of those types of signals. And it can also do something called SFR or single frequency repeater mode. And this is a DMR technology. And if you remember, as I mentioned, a radio repeater traditionally works by receiving on one frequency and transmitting on another. Because of how DMR works, we're able to split a single frequency into two time slots, time slot one and time slot two. With a traditional repeater, where uh, we are receiving on one frequency and transmitting on another. With, with a SFR, single frequency digital repeater, we are receiving on one time slot and transmitting on another time slot, but on the same frequency. And this has some benefits that we'll talk about a little bit later on in the video. Um, so the first thing that you're gonna to need to consider when deciding how to set up this SFR, or sorry, this uh, HR652 repeater is how you're gonna power it. Um, it comes from the box with the radio repeater and a DC wire harness. This is a very basic wire harness. It has two bare ends and it attaches from an aviation pin, aviation type pin, right on the top of the repeater here. Just like that. So that plugs into the top of the repeater and then with your bare wire ends, you'd either run that to a third party uh, power supply, like a variable power supply that you might buy on Amazon for like $60, and then just be sure to be feeding it the correct amount of power. Um, or you could run this directly to a battery. What you'll notice is this is obviously not a, uh, a you know, you can't plug this into a wall outlet. This is not a standard wall plug. If you do want to be able to plug it in directly to a wall, Hytera offers a, um, a power supply which uses a standard wall plug and allows you to power the repeater directly off the wall. As I mentioned, this is an optional upgrade. Um, and this is also what you would need if you want to charge the optional battery pack. So the optional battery pack I'll show you how that goes on here. The optional battery pack connects to the repeater, just like that. And this mainly has two functions. The first function would be providing backup power. So if you have a kind of a traditional setup, you're located in a building or anywhere else where you might be able to have wall power. Let's say you've got your um, either your power supply, as I mentioned, with the DC wire, wire harness that's included, or you have the, the wall outlet like this guy right here. And you have this thing plugged into the wall. 
Um, but you want to ensure that in the event of a power outage, you're able to maintain communications. With this battery pack, in the event that there's a power outage, the radio repeater is going to recognize that it's not receiving power um, anymore, and it's going to switch over to its, its battery pack. And then the other way that this might be valuable is if you want to do a remote setup. So if you want to run this repeater on a hilltop or on top of a mountain or anywhere else where you might not have um, you might not have wall power, even like a, you know, if you're a security company, you're doing security at a concert venue, uh, anything like that. This is something that you can do, you can use to power the repeater remotely. So the next thing that you're going to want to consider is how you're going to set this thing up with an antenna. And with this, there's a couple options. What you have to consider is that. Uh, without getting into too much detail of how, how radio repeaters work, you need to separate the receive and the transmit side. And there's really two ways of doing this. And, uh, and this is done so that you don't damage the radio repeater. Because what can happen is you can, if you're, if you're transmitting, um, let's say with two antennas, one for receive, one for transmit, you can end up pumping all your transmit directly back into the radio repeater and damaging your, your repeater. So what we need to do is one of two things. Either have two adequately spaced antennas or use something called a duplexer. Now, as you see, you can mount an antenna directly to the top of the repeater, just like that. And this is your transmit port over here, and then over here is your receive port. So you might be wondering, well, can I just run uh, another antenna right here? And the answer is, it's not recommended. We've talked to the Hytera um, reps, and this is just not nearly enough separation, even at a low power output, to ensure that you're not going to damage your radio repeater. And that's not something that's, that's um, specific to this repeater. That's all repeaters. You, you need to separate your transmit and your receive. So. As I mentioned, you can do this either by having two antennas that are adequately spaced apart, and depending on um, how much power you're pushing and how far the separation is between your two frequencies is going to determine how um, far apart those antennas can be to provide adequate isolation between the two. But traditionally, what people do is they use something called a duplexer. And a dupe duplexer is a piece of RF filtering equipment that you tie both your transmit side and your receive side into it, and it provides filtering and then allows you to use a single antenna. So that brings us to the next option for this radio repeater. Hytera offers an internal duplexer that can be uh, installed inside here, and it would be tuned to the specific frequencies that you're going to use, your receive uh, frequency and your transmit frequency. And it's going to go in here, and it's going to maintain its small form factor because it's going to be installed directly into the, into the repeater. Now. You could go out and buy a mobile duplexer, and you'd probably save a little bit of money that way um, if, you wanted to, if you wanted to go that route and use your own duplexer. You can do that, but you're not going to get the small form factor that you're going to get by using the proprietary duplexer that mounts inside the repeater. And then once that duplexer is installed, you just use the single transmit port, and you can run an antenna just like this. Um, right on the repeater if you want to do it that way. If you have this thing mounted in a building and, and it's a more traditional type of install, you could have your coax cable like this um, running up to your rooftop wherever you have your antenna. So you can still do that. Um, and then you know, as you see, you could you know, do, a, do a, um, a tripod mounted antenna, something like this right here. This is just a directional antenna on a tripod running their, our coax to our repeater. Um, the repeater does not come from Hytera with an antenna. However, if you buy this from Rangeland Communications, we will provide you with a very basic antenna um, that can screw onto the top just like this. And you know, if you do want something like a tripod mounted antenna, we do those for people as well. So you can reach out to us and we can get you set up with whatever you need. Now, that brings me to another feature that I mentioned earlier, which is SFR mode, single frequency mode. So single frequency mode, uh, one of the major benefits is that we don't need a duplexer 
and we don't need two antennas. Since we're only using a single frequency, we don't have a frequency split, one for transmit, one for receive, we're using a single frequency, and instead of receiving on one frequency and transmitting on another, we're receiving on one time slot of the one DMR time slot and then transmitting on the other DMR time slot. So what this allows us to do is just run a single antenna with no duplexer. So some of the benefit there is that you are gonna get um, you know, a compact package without having to run a duplexer, you're gonna cut down on your weight, and you're gonna save some money because you don't need to buy that duplexer. Uh, FCC licensing can also be a little bit easier with SFR because as far as the FCC is concerned, it's really a mobile radio. Um, since it's only using a single frequency, it's not, not really treated as a repeater. Um, some of the considerations with SFR is cross compatibility. Um, this is one thing that you definitely wanna consider. Um, Unlike traditional analog mode and digital mode, which is a standard, it's cross-compatible across brands. You could have Motorola equipment, you could have uh, um, Hytera equipment, and they can both talk on, on a repeater on, on standard digital DMR mode. Um, you could even have you know, somebody with a Baofeng on analog and somebody with a Hytera, not a problem in traditional mode. With SFR, it's a proprietary, um, type of technology and so in, to ensure that it works properly across all, um, all your radios, we recommend sticking to one radio brand. So in this case, if you have a Hytera radio, you're doing SFR, we recommend just stick with all Hytera radios um, to ensure that you don't have any cross compatibility issues. Um, now you might also wonder, can I do both? And the answer is, Yes, as long as you feel comfortable taking um, the duplex route. So if, if you're running a traditional analog or digital or uh, mixed mode auto switching repeater and you have your duplexer that's in here and it's tuned to your frequencies, um, you can still do SFR. You need the SFR license on the radio repeater and you could have you know channel one be your, your traditional repeater mode and then uh, channel two could be your SFR mode. But when you switch to that SFR mode, you're gonna need to remove that duplexer. And um, that's not that hard to do. It's just a couple screws and a couple connection points. Um, so if you're comfortable doing that, there's no problem. You can run both SFR, uh, or you can have the option to run either SFR um, or um, traditional analog digital repeater mode. Uh, if you don't know what you need, um, you can always reach out to us. We are happy to help you. We can get this thing set up for you with all of its programming. Uh, we can kind of talk to you and figure out what makes the most sense for your scenario. Um, we'll get a program, we'll get all your handhelds program, we'll send the whole system to you as a configured system, ready to go, out of the box. Um, all right, so I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head out into the field and do a quick demonstration on how this thing works. Uh, we have an SFR license on here right now, so we're gonna be demonstrating SFR mode, but for the purpose of this demonstration, um, it, it, it should really kind of just give you a general overview of how repeaters work generally. So we're gonna head out there and you'll get to see how this thing works. Selecting a good location is probably the number one factor that's going to impact the amount of range you're gonna get with your radio repeater. There are a lot of things that can impact the amount of range you're gonna see out of a repeater, including the power output of the repeater, the sensitivity of the receiver, and the gain of the antenna that you're using. But the number one factor above all else is gonna be the placement of the repeater. What you want is something that has good line of sight to all your users. So something that's either gonna be centrally located or something that's gonna be at a high elevation or both. In this case, we're on a hilltop that has a good 360 degree field of view in all directions. Um, in this case, we are testing the Hytera HR652 compact repeater. We have it set up with the optional battery pack, which allows us to run this thing remotely without any need for uh, you know, AC wall power. Um, we have a single frequency license on that. That's an optional feature, which allows us to use a single antenna and it allows us to do so without needing a duplexer. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing set up. We're gonna go ahead and ratchet strap it to a tree, and then we're gonna run some tests. All right, so we've got the repeater ratchet strapped to a tree. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head down the hill, get in our cars, and we've got somebody on the other side of this terrain. And we're gonna be talking on our radios in simplex mode. That's radio to radio with that other radio. 
and we're gonna keep driving until we lose contact with them, which will tell us that the radios are out of range in direct mode. At that point, we'll switch over to the repeater channel, and if this thing's working properly, they should be able to hear us. All right, so almost immediately after getting off that hill, we lost direct communication on our simplex channel, radio to radio, with our other radio. So, we, uh, we headed down the hill, we lost contact, but then we kept driving. We actually are all the way in another town now, and we're gonna go ahead and try on simplex, and I doubt we'll be able to hear them, uh, and then we'll switch over to repeater mode, and if everything's working properly, they should be able to hear us. I have the uh, Hytera HR, 782 radio that we're going to be testing with, so we'll go ahead and try in direct mode first. Radio test, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so it doesn't look like we're getting anything back on our direct mode. We'll go ahead and switch to the repeater channel. They're also monitoring that one for us. Radio test, one, two, three, four, five. I hear you loud and clear on the repeat channel. Great, thank you. We just tried to call you on Simplex. Were you able to hear us on that other channel? I was not able to hear you on the other channel. Great, thank you. So as you'll see, running through that repeater, that worked out very well. Uh, we were using our SFR channel. Uh, we were actually using AES as well, AES-256 with multi-key multi encryption. Um, if you guys need any radio communications equipment, handhelds or repeaters, you know where to find us.